What a great way to start the week, talking to my friends about OTC and penny stocks. I love it. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Monday. It is March 20th. Now, in every show, we go looking for hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks that have potential to make us money. So how do we do that? Well, one of the worst ways you can do it, in my opinion, is to go to the scanners and looking at the top gainers from today. Well, yeah, they made a lot today, but what are the chances they're going to do that two days in a row? I mean, there's a possibility, but is it likely? Not likely. You could go to the news. This is how most of us do it. We look for catalytic news. And you find that hot piece of news and you hope your stock is going to run. And that's what it's come down to hoping. Literally, you could find 10 hot pieces of news and maybe three or four stocks move. The other six wasted good news. So what I'm doing now is I'm looking for warm charts. I'm looking for charts that are set up for a breakout or have a lot of volume coming in. Then I go looking for news to support it. And those are the sort of stocks we look for on this show. Now, when I do my research on these stocks, I do it all right here at the OTC Markets. It doesn't matter if it's on the NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, or the OTC. I start here. First off, it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC for every single OTC stock out there. Folks, there's a lot of pages out there for the major exchanges that are updated every day, but this is the only one I know of on the entire internet. That is valuable to me. And they bring in a lot of information about the major exchange stocks. So you might as well start your research here. If you don't find what you want, then you can always run out to Google and panhandle. So how did our OTC market finish today? Well, I haven't refreshed it and that's pretty low. So I am counting on a bounce. Oh, you're taking your time. <laughs> oh, it's just a little jump. Hardly anything at all. We were at 1.2, now we're at 1.3, which is a drop from 1.7 billion yesterday. Not good. Our share volume, all right, we were under 5 billion yesterday, like at 4.7. Today we're 5. Woohoo! We need to be at 10. We're not getting anywhere in a hurry. And our trades for bloody, ugh, we're under 250,000 trades again. This is becoming more of a problem all the time. We are drooping further and further. Looks like autumn is around the corner, not summer. He gets. <sighs> Sorry, folks. All right, I've got some interesting stocks I want to share with you now. They've all got warm charts and they've all got some news backing them up. Let me show you what I found. This first stock we're taking a look at under impressed me today. I expected to see 100% gains and all we got out of it was almost 18%. I think there's still more to be gotten here. This is ticker UPIN, Universal Power Industry Corporation. She's got a pretty decent chart. She is in a nice place for a breakout if she can get a catalyst. Asking you shall receive. News came out today. And the way I calculate this news, there should have been 100% gains or more today, but we only got 17%. And she finished today just a little over two cents at 0 0.0224. She's on the pink tier, she's current, and she's got those two green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. Lots of important information represented by these green ticks. It's important if you're going to be in a stock for a long hold. If you're just day trading it, swing trading it, don't worry about this, just trade. So what does this company do? Well, they tell us here that Universal Power Industry Corporation is a diversified holdings company that owns, invests, and manages, operates, select businesses. Our business objectives cover a wide range of sectors. And to give you a little more focus on that, we're going to jump into one of their financials where they actually break it down for us. The company wholly owns and operates the following businesses. One, an apparel manufacturing facility, Guangzhou Fengya Denim Company in South China. Then they have another subsidiary, Play Market, which takes care of all of their sales and distribution. They've got another subsidiary, the Import Export Group, which takes care of their imports. They also have Advanced Technology Group. They are currently seeking opportunities within the AI or the alternative energy sector. And last but not least, they have UPIN Environmental that already has a distribution agreement for North America with Ningbo Mercury of China for environmentally friendly fire retardant and equipment. 
all companies besides the factory are actually located in Long Island, New York. I know, you get the impression everything's over in China. No, just this denim factory is over there. Everything else is over here in Long Island, New York. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Pretty impressive. She jumped from 46,000 to 1.3 million. Definitely not under the radar anymore. Security details for our share structure. All right, this is where our catalyst comes into the picture. Outstanding share count, as you see it right now, is 56 million. Well, the news that came out today told us that they are retiring 35 million shares. Folks, there's only 56 million. 35 million is more than half, way more than half. Here is that news. Universal Power Industry Corporation today announced that it has agreed to acquire 35 million of its common shares that were initially issued in conjunction with an acquisition, and they are going to retire these shares. The share structure will now be adjusted down to 21.1 million. They're also going to lower their authorized share count to 25,000. So they had 60,000 authorized. That's what they have in the bank, what they can put on the market, or what they can use as currency to make deals with. They're dropping that down to 25 uh, million, and they are dropping this down to 21 million. Folks, that's less than half. That is making anybody's shares twice as valuable, more than double. So that's why I said there should have been a 100% increase today and there was only 18%. When you cut the shares in half, your value doubles and that has not happened yet. Looking at her financials, what sort of money is she making? I mean, we've got our catalyst, but is she making money? Yeah, she is, and it's growing every single year, even through COVID. 1.5 million, 3.3, 4.2, 5.6 million. Yeah, it's millions. Who said that? Sorry if I didn't point this out. There's three zeros here you got to put behind any of the numbers here for it to make sense. So at the end of June 2022, that's the end of their fiscal year, they had $5.6 million. Looking at the quarterly, uh, 5.6 million at the end of their last annual. And here they've got uh, virtually 5 million right there, a little over 5 million. So they still have two more quarters to add to this. That was at the end of last year. Here's the first two, we've got two more. So they are definitely exceeding their annual revenues. What about their disclosures? I don't think we have anything over here to consider, no. Nothing since 2017. And you've already seen the news. We've only got two pieces of news here for 2023. So there's your catalyst, folks. They have dropped the share count immensely without a reverse split, right? So we are down to 21 million from 53 million, 57 million, somewhere like that and the stock has only gone up 18%. You do the math. I'm gonna go do some charting. <laughs> Come on, I'll do that with you too. As you guessed, we're over here at Thinkorswim, the free trading platform you get from TD Ameritrade. We are looking at a six month, four hour view of UPIN, Universal Powers Industry. Six months ago, we had a high of about 3.6 cents and we had a low bubble here of one and a half cents at the end of January. She has been going sideways with these big bounces, hitting her head on the 200 day SMA, which has now gotten pretty much flat. It is planed out. It's giving opportunity for the price to jump up there. And that's what we were looking for, an opportunity, a catalyst, something to give it a push up on top of this. She's already pierced it a couple of times. She's had a very strong day. Volume was getting stronger today. Our technicals, they're all strong. Our PPO, we've got a crossover right now, and our MACD is already at a crossover. These two are very much alike. You read them the same. Your MACD is working with the full price. Your percentage price oscillator is working with a percentage of the price. And this is my ADX. This is trend continuation. What we look for is a straight line. You want it just to be going the same direction, and that tells you if your trend is gonna change. When that line changes direction, your trend changes direction. Well, a setup that I like to see on these two, the PPO and the ADX on top of each other like this, I look for the two to start separating. 
a, a fish mouth, a, a bottle opening, just like you see here, right? It's opening up and pushing up. This is opening up and pushing down. When you see the two of them separating, it is 100% a surety that the price is climbing. So that is a strong setup right there. Our MACD pushing up with its crossover and all those green bars is also looking good. And our RSI right now is at 57. Everything looks luscious on the four hour. Looking at our 20 day one hour view. So she's under the 200. She's tapped it once here, came down to a low, rode back up, jumped a little bit higher through the 200, but has come back down and she has settled on her 50 day SMA. And here comes our nine day crossing that 50 to push it right up on top of there. Our technicals, every single one of them is inclined right now all of them you can't go wrong if all of your oscillators are pushing up so everything looks good right here five day five minute so she jumped off of a low bubble what uh, yesterday was that uh, 14th 20th no that was the 14th that's the 15th that's the 20th there so we were at a 1.6 cents and we got up to 2.6 cents. That's a little over 30% gains. She came back down to that 20 day SMA and she's bouncing off of it. Right now she is respecting it. You know, looks like a rubber ball going across the top of it. And all of our oscillators are still good. I mean, I'm not saying they're super strong, but they're all pointing in the right direction. Everything is pointing up except our ADX. And what do they tell you? If those two are separating, that's a good thing. It means the price is going up, even a little bit, as long as they're going opposite directions. So these two oscillators, our MACD has just had a crossover and our RSI is at 56. So there's hope here. We've got hidden value that has not been claimed from this company's stock. It is right now at 0 0.0224. So you're looking at two and a quarter cents and it went up 18% today. It could go up, you know, up to three cents easily. And if it gets excitable, if you get a lot of people who catch wind of this, you could get a good, a good strong spurt. But remember, don't hang on to the stock. We're day traders. We're short swing traders. We're trying to get the gains as soon as we see it. So if you see an, a run that impresses you, you should be selling on that and not at the very top. Why not? because you don't know where the very top's at. And this is how we lose money, looking for the ceiling. When you see a gain and you know the gain is there, it's still going up, take it. Is it 20, 30, 40%? Quit being greedy. If you always take 20 to 40% constantly, it doesn't matter how much you leave on the table. I assure you, you're not gonna go broke. UPIN, hidden value in this, put it on your watch list, see what it does. I did tell you that I was going to be putting in some effort to try to find you some more sub penny stocks. Found you one. This is ticker SFIO Starfleet Innotech. Now her chart, it's pretty good looking. It looks a lot like the last chart we looked at. 200 day SMA is planed out, prices right up underneath it, just looking for an opportunity to jump. So I came over here looking for that catalyst. She hasn't got any filings, but she does have a hot piece of news that came out a week ago, but it is pretty hot. They made a deal with this company and together they're going to be selling physical products as well as digital products on the metaverse. And they're going to be doing this in multiple countries around the world. So I see some potential here. So Starfleet, she finished the day at 0082 with just a little over 5% gains. She's on the pink tier, she's current, and she's got those two green ticks, so she does look good. Now looking at the bit of description they give us here, but I've got more. SFIO is a global investment holdings company focused on innovation through disruptive collaborations across three key industries, food and beverage, also known as F&B, real estate and technology with a strong presence across New Zealand, Australia, and the Philippines, as well as a roadmap for further global expansion. Now, to give you a better insight to what this company's doing, we're jumping into a news press that came out at the end of February about everything that they did in 2022. They have 100 franchised and licensed Epiphany Cafe outlets that they established in 2022. Imagine that, 100 of them opened the first year. They're into coffee, Manuka honey, a lot of things. 
product distribution team in the United Arab Emirates has brought our food and beverage products to North America ahead of the formal launch of Epiphany Cafes in Canada this year. They established acquisition deals with Herbs of the Earth and Enjoy Health, manufacturers and distributors of wellness products based in the United States and Asia. They entered into a strategic partnership with European Wellness Biomedical Group. They are finalizing a deal to secure significant minority ownership in Rizzle Construction and Developer Corporation based in the Philippines. They are finalizing a stake in the UK-based cybersecurity solutions provider, CyberQ. They have also entered into an investment agreement with the real estate industry enabler, Terra Solutions. They have successfully reduced their outstanding shares by $268 million. They plan on taking off another $200 million this year, and they are pushing on their revenues. They are getting bigger and bigger. So now that you got a little idea of what the company's involved with, what was its relative volume today? Not looking real good. Looks like we've lost about 60% today. 1.4 million down to 400,000. Falling under the radar or just being ignored? I'm not really sure. Share structure for the company is just too high. We have 1.2 billion outstanding. However, I did jump into the disclosure for this company and it is 548 million, which is actually what they tell us down here from 2021. So they haven't changed their share structure in quite a while. So we got a half a billion shares in our float. Financials for Starfleet. 2021 is the first year she gets any money on the books and she did about $24 million. Looking at 2022, we've got three quarters here. She's averaging about 7 million a quarter. That's like 21 million compared to 24 in four quarters. She's got one more quarter. If she gets 7 million, she's going to exceed last year's revenues. So they are still growing. Looking at their disclosures, they don't have anything recent here to consider. All we really have is the news and there's not a whole lot of news. We've got two pieces of news here for this year and this one is really the only one we need to take a look at. So we're going to jump into this right now. Starfleet, Innotech and PPM Toys execute a memorandum of understanding agreement for Starfleet to acquire a majority ownership interest in PPM Toys. This includes the company's restructuring and a change in headquarter locations in the USA. Currently, PPM Toys with headquarters in Monterrey, Mexico, has a US-based company presence and an office in Hong Kong. The company specializes in the commercialization, development, and distribution of toys and electronic entertainment. PPM Toys has 35 years business history in these fields and has sold millions of toys for brands including Barbie from Mattel, Tonka, The Peanuts, Hasbro properties, and Warner Brother properties. PPM counts regional giants like Walmart, Amazon, Mercado Libre, Liverpool, and Capo, Mexico's largest department store chain, as among their customers. Among the group's top priorities is a focus on strengthening the company's e-commerce operations to better capture opportunities across international markets. Starfleet will be supporting the expansion of PPM Toys' metaverse strategy. This covers the creation, marketing, and management of branded digital collectibles, non-fungible tokens, or NFTs, to be sold alongside the company's physical products, pairing them up. Buy this and you get that too. According to the company, the revenues from these initiatives could strongly impact 2023's growth and function as a foundation for additional future annualized growth. So they've got products that they're selling with this company that are on shelves and then they've got them in the metaverse and the metaverse is just starting right now i know we're lagging behind covid came inflation came the war came the metaverse just isn't high on anybody's priorities but i assure you they're still working on it in the backgrounds and when they do present it to us we'll give it all the attention at once i swear to god we love new things we love new entertainments so i think it will be hot when you can get kids involved which is really what toy are all about I think that's a whole different market for NFTs a Barbie NFT for your daughter for Christmas it only costs 500 bucks oh my god so that's the potential I see 
Now let me show you the chart. As I said, it's very similar to the last chart we looked at. This is SFIO Starfleet Innotech. This is a six month, four hour chart. We got a high back here in August of just a little over three cents and we hit a low about a week ago of double zero five. She's come up to that 200. She punched it for a few days, had this big drop, jumped right back up, punched that 200 again, and has come back down to the 50. She did have a hard drop today, but she is right back on top of it again. Our volume has been decreasing and today's was really low. Our oscillators down here. Well, we've got our PPO in the midst of a recovery. It is now just starting to turn around to cross over our pink line. Same thing going on with our MACD, but it's going to be a double crossover. It'll be crossing that top line and the signal line, this line here for our floor. And our RSI is light. It is down there at 48. 20 day, one hour view. So she's gotten up over her 200 here. She hit a high of 1.1 cents, came back down, had this big drop, jumped back up, has been going sideways, had a jump and popped. Now look, I see a pattern here. We see this drop underneath the 200 with a long wick. Then we get a pounce up. We have this big drop with a long wick. Then you have a pounce up. We've got another wick underneath the 200. All of these look like cats that are just you know, crouching down, getting ready to pounce. And the only way they can get any extra height is to squat down a little bit lower. And that's kind of what it looks like here. It's just squatting and crouching before it jumps. And this could easily be a crouch before a jump. Our technicals, our PPO, again, it's working its way back up very slightly. We have just had a crossover on our MACD and it is approaching the signal line and our RSI is climbing. It's at least up to 50 right now or five day, five minute view. So we got a high of one cent in the last five days. She has come down underneath her 200 and she is underneath her 50 right now. And let's see the price, 0082, right there folks. Ooh -hoo! We are right on top of the 50 day SMA. Here comes our nine day up behind it. We need to get that 90 on top of the 50. Now that she's on top of the 50, she can make a play for that 200 day SMA. And she's already in position on the other charts. Our technicals look like she wants to try right we see this is starting to point up our macd is pointing up our rsi is climbing everything looks like it is working towards that direction we just need a little bit of catalyst a little bit of news that financial they've got a financial that is due and if it's at least what they've been doing for the last three quarters seven million dollars they're going to exceed last year's and that is bragging rights that'll get the stock moving as well so SFIO. It is a sub penny stock. It's tough to get these moving, but hopefully we'll see this one do a jump. Uh oh, looks like somebody's been double dipping. This is our second sub penny stock back to back. This is ticker VNUE, Venue Inc. Now her chart is nowhere near a breakout. It's already broke out and it is going crazy. I came over here to see what the deal was. There's no filings to look at, but she's had two big pieces of news come out in the last week. And though the most recent one is big, I think it's the one that's a week old that it's running on. And it too is about the metaverse. <laughs> know, I know you're going, John, come on. There's nothing going on with the metaverse. I agree, but they say that they are 90% complete and they're close to launching. And you know what they're bringing to the metaverse? Live concerts. Do you think that's going to be hot? I do. VNUE, she finished today at 0079 with almost 52% gains. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got both those green ticks. Looks great. We got a pretty decent description here of the company, keeping in mind what I was just telling you. Venue is a music technology company dedicated to further monetizing the live music experience for artists, labels, writers, publishers, and literally all stakeholders by creating new and exciting products, by leveraging automation technology and second to none experience in the instant live space. Nice way to put the metaverse, right? Instant live space. 
and by identifying issues such as lack of transparency with performance rights organizations and solving this through innovation and our patent pending solutions. So they're working with the music industry to protect their rights and bring it to us. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Let's see what we got over here. Ooh, a nice jump, about 300%. She went from 5.6 million to 18.6 million. She's getting a lot of attention for this news. Share structure for the company. Oh yeah, lots of shares here, and believe it or not, that is right, right there. I went and dove into the pink disclosure, and that's the number I found, 1.5 billion shares. So it is huge. The financials for the company, not a lot going on here. At the end of 2021, they only had $100,000 and they were in the hole, $52,000. Looking at the quarterly for 2022, not much better. 41,000, 93,000, 99,000. At least this time they're getting to keep something. Outside of that, they need something to stir up some revenues. Disclosures, as I said, they've got nothing over here except a lot of financial disclosures. And then we've got the news. Well, they've got news over here and we really only need to concern ourselves with these two right here. Now we're gonna dive into this one, but I wanna talk to you about this one. Venue retains Hamilton and Associates to facilitate NASDAQ uplist. So they're not just talking about it. They've hired someone to help them actually do it. So this is probably going to occur. That's good news, except for one thing. If you're holding the stock, chances are you're going through a reverse split. You've got to be at least $3 to get onto the NASDAQ. You got to be $4 to get onto the New York Stock Exchange. You're looking at at least a 400 reverse split, one in 400. Not that that's going to hurt them. They've got the shares to spare, but that's not the point. A reverse split takes away your shares. And if they go to the NASDAQ, chances are they're not going to just go to $3. They're going to want to go to $5 or something. So I would expect a reverse split. That other piece of news, this came out on March 14th. Today, Venue Inc. is reporting that its Icon Metaverse Entertainment Venue product, also known as VIP, is getting closer to launch date as one of the multiple planned virtual festival arenas stands at approximately 90% completion. As previously reported, Venue is working with South American premier Roblox developer Koku to build the first ever persistent multi-stage music and entertainment festival experience, which will initially be deployed on Roblox platform. The Venue Fest entertainment space will operate continuously, presenting both free and ticketed concerts, music launches, listening parties, and much more each day across multiple themed and customizable stages and festival venues. Fans will experience interactive games, missions, e-merchandise, NFTs, as well as parental controls for Roblox young audience. In offering every facet of a true metaverse event production house, Venue will deliver live and recorded performances within multi-dimensional experiential virtual worlds and will track musical performances with Venue's SoundStream MDM platform to ensure rights holders are properly compensated. The Roblox Festival and multi-stage virtual experience will offer a permanent persistent festival environment with customizable stages for entertainers to take up virtual residencies. Folks, this is a lot like MTV, except it's going to the metaverse. How big was MTV? And that was just videos. We're talking about live concerts. And even if they're recorded, you're going to be able to see the person in this spectrum, this metaverse, this auditorium. You'll probably be standing next to other people. It is going to be hot, folks. I think this is going to be really, really big. The metaverse versus lagging behind, but as I said, companies are not, and they're going to be products out whether we're ready for them or not. Speaking of ready or not, let's go take a look at that chart. I told you it was a hot chart. This thing is on fire. This is sticker VNUE, Venue Inc. This is a six month, four hour chart. We got a low bubble here at the end of October of 0019. And at the beginning of November, we were at 0092. 
And this run here was about metaverse news. She ran from 0025 up to that high, almost a 400% run before she crashed all the way down here, had news come out about the metaverse again, and here she goes. She's pushed herself up over that 50, bounced off the 50 hard, up onto the 200, did not look back, not a second tap, and she is off and running. Look at our volume. Our volume is getting stronger and stronger, and every single oscillator is pointed up right now. There is no way the chart can do you harm when every single oscillator is pointing up. Things look really good on the four hour chart. 20 day, one hour view. Pretty bloody flat here until she hit this low bubble, and then very slowly, not with a whole lot of hurry, she climbed over that 50, got up over that 200, and now she's put it in gear and she's rolling uphill. And she has hit a high today of that 0086. All of our oscillators are still on fire. Everything is still pushing up. Five day, five minute. Our low here is 0029. Here comes our 200 day SMA. It is fresh. She bounced off of it, took a nice run. Looks like she's trying to pay heed to the 50, could be the 20 day SMA. She's arguing with the 20 right now. If it's a 50 she's paying heed to, she's gonna come down to that 50. Our technicals right now say that she is dipping at this very moment. She was climbing, as you can see, and everything is starting to pull back. I'd be looking for a bounce, but of course, there's no bounce guaranteed, so you always want to watch this. But the fact of the matter is, they've got a big deal. They're bringing live concerts to the metaverse. It's getting close. We don't have any dates, so there could be some bounces on this stock before their next press release. But I believe that next press release, if it has anything to do with concerts, bringing it out, uh, the new products that you can buy to involve yourself with it, Woohoo! I think this thing is going to run. VNUE, put it on your watch list. It may have to be there for a little while, but it could be well worth it. Which was your favorite stock of the three? UPIN? I wouldn't blame you. Take more than 50% of the shares away and double the value of the shares you're holding? Not a bad deal. Considering it only went up 18% today, I think there's more to be gotten. Then you got SFIO, they've got that deal with that toy company, and that toy company's been around a long time dealing with big companies, and they're not just dealing with physical products, they're dealing with NFTs, digital products as well, and somehow they're bringing the NFTs to the physical products. Definitely one to keep your eye on. And the other one, well, that's just, <laughs> that's a giveaway. Come on, concerts in the metaverse. This is going to be hot. I can't imagine anybody not liking this. People of all classes are going to be buying metaverse gear just so they can go to these concerts. So I am really liking, what was that ticker? V-N-U-E. And the charts are looking good. Even though she's already been running, I think she's probably got some more to give. But watch those bounces carefully, folks. Remember, due diligence is how I'm finding these. I'm not going to the news first. I'm going to the charts first and then trying to find news to back up the charts. What do you think? Is it worth a shot? Couldn't hurt. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.